Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm joined today by Sean Nair, who's the Chief Technology Officer at Zscaler. Uh, Sean, a quick hello uh, before we get into our talk, but just to introduce yourself, and for those not familiar with Zscaler, what Zscaler does. Uh, thank you, Zias. Uh, thanks for having me here. My name is Sham Nair, uh, Chief Technology Officer of Zscaler, focused on product and cloud operations for all of Zscaler's products. Zscaler has been a leader in zero trust security for over 16 plus years. Uh, it's a cloud built solution. We provide a internet access solution. We provide a private access solution that actually helps replaces VPNs in a very, much more secure fashion. We also provide digital experience solutions. So we provide solutions for the inline cloud, which is in terms of all types of traffic. We also provide solution to protect data at rest or at, at in transit. And lastly, we provide solutions that help security operations optimize and modernize their infrastructure. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to you, and I'm and I'm glad you're joining me today because this week, uh, Zscaler announced uh, the $350 million acquisition of a company called Avalor. Uh, Bloomberg. Uh, described the company as an AI-enhanced data security startup. Of course, uh, you can't really go to any show anywhere, uh, you know, without talking about artificial intelligence. And I know, uh, you know, Zscaler, when you first launched, used the cloud to disrupt the status quo. And I know you've been trying to do the same with AI. So uh, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper uh, on Avalor. Now, uh, before we start, though, I wanted uh, to set the table here a little bit because much of the industry focus on AI has been about using AI to improve security operations. It's a SOC tool, it finds threats faster, but there is another side of the AI security coin that Zscanner has been addressing, and that's been able to provide security for AI versus AI for security. And so if you could talk about those two differences and, and sort of the, and, uh, and the technical requirements around that, that'd be great. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that question. So as AI gets adopted more and more in enterprises, it's one of the major concerns uh, CISOs and CIOs have in terms of what is the most secure manner in terms of adopting AI. So Zscaler would want to be the trusted layer or the zero trust layer to help enterprises adopt AI in a much more secure fashion. We have been leveraging AI since uh, 2018 with our first acquisition in that space, where we have been using AI internally to make sure that the traffic patterns, whether it is data protection, whether it is uh, in terms of the optimization, we are leveraging AI. We are adding more and more capabilities into our data protection, where you get visibility of what AI applications are in use, you get uh, governance of them. And now we are also adding more functionality to help you securely or enterprises securely use these AI applications. As you know, many people don't realize that even what goes in a prompt is data. And a prompt engineering is, is, a, is a technique through which you can not only get the relevant answers, but you can actually trick many of the chatbots out there. You have seen su several such of them in the news. It could cause brand damage to you. So in the context of that, Zscaler will continue to invest in becoming the trusted AI layer so that AI is, or securely AI can be used in enterprises. On the other hand, and as you know, we have about 400 billion plus transactions a day that goes to our system. Like every other security system, we have full fidelity locks for them. We call them nano locks. These are high, highly compressed, well, well, very performant locks in our system. On top of that, we provide security operations. We have an application called Risk 360 that provides a comprehensive risk profile. What Avalor adds to it is the ability to, instead of collecting all the data, connect with all the other ecosystem data and provide functionality that helps the uh, uh, security operations. Now, as a platform, as we integrate more of the Avalor data fabric features, it's gonna help us in both those layers, which is in terms of AI for security, as well as using AI for security operations. All right. Now, um, I want to uh, drill down on a couple of things you said. Um, you know, first of all, AI and security isn't unique to Zscaler, right? Every security vendor talks about AI and security today. So can you just, um, you know, pre-Avalor, talk about the, what you feel are Zscaler's differentiators in AI? 
Oh, thank you for that question. One of the one of the characteristics of having good artificial intelligence or machine learning is the quality of the data. Now, not every data is created equal, is how I would like to say. So the biggest advantage that Zscaler has had is given that we sit in line in terms of the traffic and the full fidelity logs we, we collect, we have a lot of metadata and data about that traffic pattern. This richness of the data is what actually helps Zscaler leverage AI to power security operations as well as secure, uh, uh, zero trust networking. So now the, there are additional ecosystem of applications that are sitting out there, whether it's an XDR solution or a different point solution that CISOs are using. With, the, with Avalor, we will be able to actually connect with those data, harmonize, contextualize, and provide better artificial intelligence capabilities. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, certainly from an AI perspective, uh, you know, a lot of people focus on the models and things like that, but, uh, you know, data winds up being a differentiator. And I think the way your cloud is built and the way you collect the data, that certainly uh, makes some sense. Now, you, you talked about Avalor's data fabric, right? And that's not a term used in security a lot. So can you you talk about what that data fabric is and and then what it, how it allows Avalor to differentiate itself? Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think the biggest excitement I have in something like a data fabric is that we can actually contextualize and harmonize with additional data as data is coming in. So instead of having to collect all the data in one place and go uh, with the risk of governance of that data, how do we manage the data, copying of this data with Avalos data fabric, you will be able to connect to different data sources and actually extract out the harmonized or contextualized information that is required for security operations. So that's one. The data fabric in itself is, it has a data model, security specific domain data model that is built in. It's an opinionated model. Opinionated model actually helps us standardize on what security uh, data needs to look like. It's also a flexible model. So enterprises or applications can actually uh, extend that particular model. This data fabric concept is generally brings in that opinionated aspect of a data model. Now this is purpose built for particular set of data, in this case for security. And as I said, being modifiable or extensible makes it help enterprises as well as vendors who are partners working with us to actually extend that particular model and find value on top of it. So data fabric in itself, yes, it's a new concept within the security industry, but something that has been leveraged in multiple other industries. So at the end of the day, security is going to be a data problem. It's going to be an AI problem. You know, threat actors are weaponizing all the AI that is available out there. Threats are becoming more and more sophisticated and complicated. And the only way to go after them is with data and AI. And that's what a fabric actually allows us to do. Yeah, and so without that data fabric though, then uh, customers would have to, uh, I guess, move their data from different locations to aggregate it in one place to secure it, right? So this lets them keep the data where they want, but still provide the same level of security as if it were located in one place. Yeah, in the, in the industry, often people talk about, in the data industry, often people talk about zero copy architecture. You know, there is truly not going to be a zero copy. You move some pieces of data, but yeah. minimizing copying of data, minimizing the data movement is going to be the characteristic that uh, a data fabric can allow us to do. Yeah, anytime you move data, there's a risk. So uh, now I know uh, one of the differentiators uh, Avalor uh, talks about is the their, their unified vulnerability management, UVM. And so can you talk about the role that UVM plays uh, in the data fabric? In, in in the case of Avalor, uh, UVM was one of the first use cases that they leveraged to build a build on top of the fabric. The UVM itself is not going to be an added characteristics of the fabric, but the UVM is a good example of with a with a data fabric and leveraging the right amount of data or the right quality of data. How quickly can you build a solution? that has much more business context of each of the organizations. As we've talked to customers who have used Avalor in you know, in a joint customers or customers who have used Avalor, what we have learned is 
how easy it was for them to contextualize the vulnerability management in the context of what that business was or what that enterprise is. Be it financials, be it you know CPG companies, this is a common theme that we heard. So uh, the way I would characterize it, uh, Zs here is to say that UVM is a proof of how the power of the data fabric and we with Zscaler and Avalor will be able to build more and more applications leveraging the quality and the quantity of data and metadata that we have and the fabric similar to how UVM is a proof of the first application that they have built. All right, so let's uh, pivot this discussion now more to your customers. So if I'm a customer of Zscaler and I see that you bought Avalor, uh, what are some of the short-term benefits that that brings? Uh, obviously, there's no integration done yet, but uh, there must be some kind of value today for your current customer base. Yeah, one, one, of, the, uh, uh, one of the good things is uh, Avalor's UVM already integrates with Z, Zscaler uh, data. So if there are joint customers, they're already dr uh, uh, deriving the value or our Zscaler customers are going to leverage the UVM application will immediately get the value. But the excitement for me is uh, you're aware of Risk 360 that we got, we uh, took, took to market very recently. It's been a product that, you know, uh, I, when you demo it to CISOs, they just ask us, okay, this is great. When can I have it? It's so exciting because it gives you the full 360 risk profile of an enterprise. Fundamentally, the data fabric is going to power the Risk 360 profile as well as the uh, Risk 360 application as well as the UVM, which means a cohesive data set as well as the power of just not. Risk 360 currently has more than 140 plus uh, 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 sources. We'll get more and more sources to actually enhance and enrich the Risk 360. That's going to be the immediate value. Very soon, we will be able to extend capabilities both in risk, UVM, as well as new applications because of the power of the data fabric. So I'm super excited that immediately customers who are a Avalor and Zscaler customers will get value without almost uh, uh, zero new deployment or operational cost, which is, which is one of the concerns that customers always have when they have to adopt something new. And secondly, the ability for us to bring in value as soon as possible to the customers because these two things integrate really well. Now, what about long-term? You are the CTO, right? So you're responsible for all the technology and the integration. Uh, when you think about the long-term benefits of the two companies together, what's that one plus one equals three value proposition? What, what can customers look forward to? Thank you. That's what drove us to actually think about uh, coming together. I think the long-term proposition is how do we revolutionize, how do we modernize what is uh, the SOC operations today? As as you know, you know there is a huge shortage both in terms of manpower and in terms of all the technologies that are required to proactively run security operations. A lot of the security operations still continues to be reactive in nature. My vision is how can we proactively run security operations? I'll use a use case to uh, explain this a little bit further. If you look at, you know, we know about, you know, we get data that shows us where vulnerabilities exist in the system. We get data that we actually can show what are the potential attack paths in there. Zscaler is the first line of defense in terms of making sure that nothing gets downloaded onto your systems if it shouldn't, as well as the last line of defense thing, uh, which looks at nothing should actually escape, as in, you know, no data should exfiltrate if it shouldn't, right? Data protection, as well as protecting from threat actors, that's what we, we do best. Now, knowing the vulnerability, knowing the attack path, it will be very easy for us to actually translate the intent of a CISO or a SOC protect practitioner into a policy in our system. So the ability to create what I would start calling as the security dome in a much more simple fashion says that all the security operations can become proactive is what I'm looking forward to. All right, John, so I just have one more question for you. Given your role in Zscaler, uh, I'm curious as to if you if we roll the clock ahead, five, seven, 10 years, what's your vision for what the security industry looks like? I, I know from a security pro perspective, we're always, you know, we're always fighting from behind. Does that change? What, what's the future hold here? I, I, uh, that's a great question, Jay. So I would say two things. One is uh, AI or security for AI will become more and more zero trust. That's that's an area where there's significant growth. Second is security operations will become very seamless and 
stimulus, if I may say that. In the context, if I may explain it a little bit further, today, a lot of time and effort is spent in terms of collecting data, collecting logs. AI will simplify it. ETL will go away. You don't need to extract, transform, and load. You'll actually get information because AI can extract the right information and provide it to you. A lot of the security operations today is is uh, reactive, building playbooks, and you know SOC operations are very time consuming. That will go away because AI co-pilots, security co-pilots will become much more proactive, being able to translate security practitioners' intent into actions. So I'm looking forward to a real seamless as well as seamless security operations and a trusted layer for security powered by Zscaler. I like that seamless and seamless. So I think uh, uh, from the security pros that I know, you're you know music to their ears. So uh, all right, unless you have anything else to add. No, thank, thanks for having me. I'm super excited about this opportunity yeah. to talk about Avalor and Zscaler. Thank you. Yeah, well, congratulations uh, on the acquisition. Uh, on behalf of Sham Nair, I'm Zia Scaravalo from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another episode of ZCast.